don't have anywhere to talk, but in my parents' spare bedroom, there was a mirror in there. I was in front of that mirror practicing my presentation, getting in my reps. Because whatever it is you want to do in life, you've got to get in reps to be good at. The, the more reps you get, the better you are. And so January 12th, 2017, I'm at the law firm at work. A buddy of mine calls me from Houston. He works at Houston Media. He said, hey, get down here to Houston right now. And I'm, I'm 90 miles away in Beaumont. He said, tonight is the Bear Bryant Coach of the Year Award that the eight best coaches in the country are in this room. I've got an extra press pass if you want to go. So I was like, you bet I want to go. So I, I drive the 90 miles from Beaumont to Houston after work. I'm practicing my elevator pitch the whole way there on I-10. I get to the Toyota Center. He hands me a press pass. He sneaks me in. There I am. I'm on the floor. All these coaches there, USC, Wisconsin, Penn State, they're all there. And I get to go up and I meet all these coaches. And I shake their hand and tell them why they should bring me in to talk to their team. And, man, every single coach I met that night, Ryan, slammed the door in my face. They all told me no. Everybody was saying no. In one hour, I've been told no seven times by the eight coaches that are there. That's a no every eight minutes. And the voice in my head is telling me, go home. You're an imposter. You don't belong in this room. And I think we can all relate to the voice, right? The, oh, yeah. the imposter syndrome, like things aren't going out how you think they should. And maybe I don't belong here. That's what's going through my head. But let me tell you something I quit doing a long time ago. Listening to myself. You shouldn't listen to yourself either because the voice in your head, it can be fear talking to you. And you never want to listen to fear because fear is a liar. And, and Ryan, the last coach, well, you know who it is. He's the hardest guy to get to in the room. Because his team had just beat Alabama two nights before for the national championship. Everybody wants Dabo Sweeney's time. So for the next hour, I stalked Dabo Sweeney around that room. And I look like a nut, man. I'm hiding behind fake plants. I'm weaving in and out of tables. Every conversation Dabo has, I'm on the edge of it trying to jump in. And finally, I get in front of Dabo, man. And I give him my best stuff for about a minute. And I come up for air. And Dabo's like, dude, you got a card on you? And so I gave him my card. He took it from me and he said, I'll check you out. And he was gone. But in life in general, Mr. Jackson in county jail, he told me, he said, you don't have to win all your fights, but you do have to fight all your fights. And so I felt good about that night because I fought all my fights. I lost them all. Four months later, I get an email from the director of football operations at Clemson, this guy named Mike Dooley. And uh, Mike Dooley's email said, hey, Damon, Coach Swinney met you at a award show in Houston, and he'd love to have you come talk to the team. Do you have August 1st open? <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I got every first open, Mike Dooley. I, I can come right now. So August 1st, 2017, I get to go speak to the Clemson Tigers, the defending national champions of college football. And when I get done with my presentation that night, Dabo's up in my face, man. He said, and Dabo's very high energy himself. He, oh, yeah. He's like, he's like, man, that's the most amazing story I've ever heard, Damon. I, I've never seen my players respond like that to a speaker. He said, if you've been to Alabama yet, and I'm like, no. I've been to Clemson. I hadn't been anywhere, Dabo. I haven't been in, in, in No, I haven't been to Alabama. He said, well, I just text Nick Saban from the back of the room. We'll see what happens. And the next day when I when, I, when my flight lands at Intercontinental Airport in Houston, I turn on my phone. I've got a voicemail, a text message from the director of football operations at Alabama. We'll see you in Tuscaloosa in three weeks. Dabo called. Then it's Kirby Smart called. Then it's Lincoln Riley calling. Every coach in America is calling my phone because Dabo is calling them all. He's advocating for me. He became my biggest advocate. And it's that idea that, that growth follows belief. And the thing about it is, is you have to believe in yourself before other people will believe in you. But once you show that, once you believe in yourself, people will buy into you. People will believe in you, but they'll never do it until you believe in yourself.